My name is Asia, and as of July 10th, I will have officially resigned from my five years in the Baltimore City public school system, but we can go ahead and call it now. I want to talk to you a little bit about my five years in the school system and uh, why I'm leaving. Part of why I'm leaving is why we're here tonight, to tell the story of the teacher. I don't think a lot of people know what's really going on in education. There's a lot of um, propaganda, I think, about these bad teachers, uh, of which in my five years teaching full-time for the city, I've met two bad teachers. Um, and I've met some teachers who were completely burnt out. And then I've met a lot more really good teachers doing way too much work for way too little money and way too little respect. Now, it used to be like I was telling somebody, <laughs> Right? It used to be, um, I was telling somebody in the line to get food, it used to be that when you signed up to teach, you agreed to not have to play the corporate game in exchange for being paid peanuts. So I will teach my students how to play the game, but I also get to teach them about humanity. And I also get to teach them about the world and how the world works. And in exchange for that, you pay me peanuts but I at least get some honor and respect. Like I go into a room and I say, hey, I teach. And not only that, you guys, I taught middle school. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's a whole nother ball game. So what's happening is that there's all, all the joy is being taken out of teaching with all the bureaucracy, first of all. They're making it absolutely impossible for us to do our jobs and now they're making us play the corporate game with none of the money, we still have to play the game. So they're trying to run schools like corporations, so now we don't have the respect, we don't have the money, we don't have the time, we don't have the resources. Why would, it, and as I said to a principal my first year, no one sticks around for that but saints and martyrs. And unfortunately, I am neither. Um, I am very, very human. So, my seventh graders bought me a massage gift certificate for Christmas this year and I just used it today. <laughs> Why? Because we have no time. We spend our Saturdays working. I'm always shopping for kids. I'm always grading papers. I'm always working evenings. I'm exhausted. I have my 11-year-old daughter here who's going into sixth grade herself next year, and I had nothing left for her at the end of each day, which is fine because, as I told somebody once, I signed up for this. What's unfortunate is when you're put into a position where you can't be effective at what you signed up to do. And with all of the bureaucracy and when we talk about policy, we're not being set up for success. And if I'm not set up for success, I can't set my students up for success. Um, one of the ways that we're not being set up for success is this stupid standardized testing. So we're going to talk about that a little bit. Um, there's a quote that I love, which is, everyone is a genius. But if you judge a fish by its ability to swim, uh, I'm sorry, judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking it's stupid. Those are our kids. Everyone has a gift. And our job as a teacher is to chip away at whatever insecurities, whatever doubt, whatever fear, whatever thoughts of dumb, and, and help them to find their genius. Their genius may be in building, their genius may be in math, their genius may be in science, their genius may be in art. Um, I too was a drama teacher for a long time. Before I taught public school, I worked in several, several Baltimore City schools um, as a contractor, as a substitute, as a drama teacher, as a part-time poetry teacher, as a tutor, um, and I also teach youth ministry twice a month at my spiritual center. I love what I do, love teaching, and it is a gift. And it is a gift that is now being quantified. And and, and, I, and I find it insulting. Um, so I want to tell you a little bit about my experience in the three schools that I was at in the five years with the few minutes that I have left. First one I was at was a school called John Rura. It's in southwest Baltimore and it's um, mostly a Latino population. It's in Greek town, so I had a few Greek students, a lot of um, Latino students, some white and some black. One of the most actually international diverse schools in the city is John Rura. And they left me alone. I actually went through an alternate uh, certification program. I went through BCTR after my five years of substitute teaching and contracting and all that good stuff. And they left me alone until we got to benchmark C, which came right before the MSA. 
at the time, the standardized test at the time. And when they got my scores for benchmark C, they brought me into the office and said, we don't know what you're doing, but it's not working. We're gonna bring somebody in to co-teach with you and she's gonna show you how it's done. So this woman came in and ironically, she had resigned the year before because she was so fed up with the teaching to the test. So she was working as a substitute and they brought her in to show me how to teach. And she said, I'm not gonna show her how to teach, but I will co-teach with her. And we spent the next month teaching to the MSA. It was beautiful, um, not. But, uh, so anyway, we get to benchmark D, which is the end of the year test after the standardized test. And my special educator at the time says to me, um, I think one of the answers on the answer key is wrong. So I never thought to check the answer key that Baltimore City was giving to me. Imagine that I, I just assumed that they, were, they knew what they were doing. But then that led me to check it. There were four answers that were wrong on that test. And this was a test, the scores of which they were telling me to use to grade my students. So these were scores that were coming on the report card. That's a difference of 12 points. So it was a difference between a 78 and a 90, a 68 and an 80, a 58 and a 70. And I wrote to the Office of Teaching and Learning and I emailed them and I went to the principal and no one ever got back to me. So that's number one. Then I transferred from John Rura um, to a school called Brims Lane. And that's in Northeast Baltimore, one of our more um, urban centers of education. And there I had someone, um, principal, the vice principal called me at about six o'clock in the evening, because of course I'm still there, right? Uh, one night, and he's calling me over and over again. Then he has my friend call me. And so finally I pick up the phone, and I'm like, okay, what's the emergency? Um, well, the principal said you need to change your bulletin boards. Huh? <laughs> Well, um, it's not fourth grade level work. And um, I said, but it's the second week of school. This is an assignment about you know, the culture that we wanted to create for the school and what's your vision for the classroom. And that's where I like to start, where you can engage kids and you find out what I learned when I was teaching drama and teaching poetry and doing all the contracting. I'm not in charge of my room. The kids are in charge. So my job is to find out what they want and then create a system for how we get it. That way, that's my classroom management system. Anytime there's an issue in the classroom, we come back to, wait a minute, you guys said that you wanted this. You guys said that we wanted this, right? So is this gonna get us to that? No, one of my favorite lines in the classroom is, do we have time for that? No, right? So anyway, I told the lady, um, listen, I'm gonna try to stay until Christmas, the principal. I said, I'm gonna try to stay until Christmas and then I'll try to stay until the end of the year. But I know that this is not the place for me. Um, and the vice principal said, listen, you know, I'm gonna help you out, I know you're a little radical here. Do me a favor, babe, just post tests and quizzes on the bulletin board because those are typed and you won't have an issue with, you know, spelling errors or grammar errors, which is why I had to take them down. So anyway, over Christmas break that year, my fourth grade teacher, I was teaching fourth grade at the time, my fourth grade teacher called me. And when she called me, it reminded me of why I wanted to become a teacher and everything that I love about teaching and how much I love engaging my students and uh, developing the love of learning. And I said, I'm gonna switch things up a little bit and I'm gonna bring it back to basics and the things that really made me want to learn as a student. So my midterm evaluation, I shared that with the powers that be, the administration, and they said, well, that's great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna revisit your scores at the end of this semester and decide whether you need to be put on a performance improvement plan or a PIP. And for those of you who are teachers, you know that's teacher speak for pre-fired, right? A PIP. Um, so they were gonna put me on a PIP if I didn't get these scores. Well, in that particular school, they gave new meaning to teach to the test. Not only did they have these benchmark tests, but they had something called the principal's test, which was the prequel to the benchmark test, was an exact copy of benchmark C. And I was given this test, and that is what I was to teach for the next three or four months, uh, or the next couple of months. So I called a friend of mine, thank you, who was teacher of the year in Atlanta at one point, and uh, he said to me, you better get gangsta and teach that test if, if you wanna keep your job. So that's what I did. And then I transferred to City Neighbors Hamilton, um, where things were much, conditions were better. 
but we have, um, as City Neighbors Hamilton, the same, we're subjected to this new park test. And I would love to talk to you guys about the issues with park. I'm sure many of you guys know, um, but too much rigor. Uh, too much rigor without knowing our students. It's wasting human resources, capital resources, time resources, technology resources that we don't have. And if you guys would like to be a part of the movement to push back against PARC,